As we go forward, I would like to introduce to you Olivia Lenbetter, a leading nurse out of Rush University Hospital outside of Chicago. Her innovation is going to take us to that next step on the Nurse Innovator Index. Olivia? Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you all so much for being here today. My name is Olivia Lemberger, and I am here to present the Nurse Innovator Index, PhD Health Sciences candidate at Northern Illinois University and a clinical nurse educator at Rush Copley Medical Center. So the problem that I focused on was that the contributions of nurse innovators, entrepreneurs, and scientists that are completely transforming healthcare are largely unknown. The primary goals of the Johnson & Johnson Innovation Fellowship was really to elevate and amplify nurse-led innovation. So with that task, I decided to create the Nurse Innovator Index. I wanted to create a space to provide free, easily accessible resources for people to learn about nurse innovators. I'm really excited to share that the Nurse Innovator Index highlights contributions of over 300 nurses. There are over 80 nurse-led products, 30 nurse-led processes, 50 nurse-led businesses, many examples of policies, measures, and over 40 examples of nurse-led innovations to improve specifically health equity. So when you enter nurseinnovatorindex.com into your browser, and I'll provide a link later um, in the presentation, it will take you to the main page. The search function allows you to search by name of innovators. So if there's somebody you're interested in learning about, you can put their name in. There are two drop-down categories. The first innovation category, you can search by either near scientist, innovator, entrepreneur. And I just quickly want to define those. Nurse scientists are those who systematically gather and use research and evidence to make hypotheses and test them to gain and share understanding and knowledge. Nurse innovators create new products, services, or processes. Nurse entrepreneurs bring new products, services, or processes to market by initiating a for-profit or not-for-profit business venture. As you can see, the innovation type, there are a myriad of different ways nurses have successfully innovated. And if you're interested, you can click on one specifically to learn more. So with this function, there are drop-down boxes and every single square represents a nurse innovator. If we can kind of drill down, I just wanna show you an example. Dr. Abby Hess innovated a breathing controlled video game app that helps children relax and pair, prepare for surgery. On the tab, you can learn more if you wanna have a direct link to more information regarding her innovation. There's also affiliations listed. If there's research affiliated with that innovation, there's a direct link to that, outcomes associated with the innovation, and then additional resources. So every nurse innovator that's listed in this index, I've reached out to. I reached out to Dr. Abby Hess and I said, would you like to participate? She said, yes. I asked her, what information would you like people that search through this index to know? And she made sure to include every bit of information that she feels is pertinent to her innovation. I feel like people want to know this innovation or the information about these innovations, but people and especially nurses just don't have the time to track down all these resources. So what's great is you don't have to anymore because it's all listed in the index. Every single thing about the innovation is here. I also want to take some time to really talk about the collective outcomes of innovations created by nurses that, again, are completely transforming healthcare. After witnessing the traumatic effect of hair loss on cancer patients, Yvonne Olinson, a nurse working in an oncology unit, was inspired to innovate the Digni cap. It's a cap worn during chemotherapy to reduce hair loss. Yvonne chose the name Digni cap inspired by the Latin word dignitas, which means dignity. Outcomes, clinical trials done show that eight out of 10 patients who use the DignicAP system during chemotherapy retained the majority of their hair. Amazing. I'd like to introduce you to Caitlin Rollins. She is a nurse at the Charles George VA Hospital and she has incorporated virtual reality, a non-pharmacologic treatment to reduce pain and anxiety experienced by veterans. Caitlin and her team have incorporated VR into most every area of the hospital setting. Outcomes, 
Results of a recent study included a statistically significant decrease in pain intensity with an average 12% decrease in all pain levels and a 92% reduction in anxiety for those in concurrent pain. Amazing. I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Shannon Monroe. She innovated the Hospital Acquired Pneumonia Prevention by Engaging Nurses Program, or HAPPEN. This program encourages patients to practice consistent oral hygiene, toothbrushing two to three times a day, and nightly denture cleaning. Outcomes? When originally launched in 2016, the program led to an impressive 92% decrease in the rate of non-ventilator-associated hospital-acquired pneumonia. Since then, this program has now been incorporated in 111 VA facilities with an average decrease in pneumonia rates of 40 to 60%. Amazing. Jackie Casignal, who is the founder and president of Worldwide Community First Responder, which is a nonprofit charitable organization with a mission to prevent deaths worldwide through education and training. The education focuses on educating community members worldwide of fatal health conditions and preventative measures. Outcomes? In just 10 years, Worldwide Community First Responder has trained and educated over 400,000 community members in critical life-saving skills. Amazing. I'd like to you to introduce you to Marka Bristow. She was an advocate for people with disabilities and was instrumental in the passage of the American with Disabilities Act of 1990, which outlawed discrimination against 61 million Americans. Marka's Innovation Access Living is a nonprofit organization that advocates for people with disabilities. The outcome of Access Living? Disability-related improvements that took place in Chicago resulted in 100% of all CTA buses are now accessible to people with disabilities. And through advocacy, Access Living directed the allocation of $30 million of the Chicago Public Schools Capital Improvement Plan to make Chicago's, all Chicago schools more accessible. Amazing. Dr. Sarah Zanton, the Dean of the Johns Hopkins School of Nursing in partnership with the CMS Innovation Center, innovated the Capable Model, Community Aging or Living for Elders. It is a low-cost, comprehensive, participant-driven model that improves function by addressing the home environment and using the strengths of older adults themselves. It provides five months of in-home support by an occupational therapist, registered nurse, and handy worker. Outcomes? Combining environmental and personal supports, older adults can cut their disabilities in half and decrease depressive symptoms. Capable improves health outcomes while reducing healthcare costs. $3,000 in participant program costs have been shown to yield a $22,000 medical savings. Amazing. And as a rush nurse, I am absolutely thrilled to share the Surplus Project. In December 2015, Dr. Jennifer Grenier, founder of the Surplus Project, in partnership with a team from Rush Oak Park Hospital, started to decrease food insecurity by packaging surplus food from hospital cafeterias and donating the food to local homeless shelters. The Surplus Project is a local community-based organization that works to reduce commu commercial food waste and increase the amount of safe, nutritious food for those who struggle with hunger. Outcomes, the Surplus Project is currently providing 700 nutritious meals each month, with, which directly benefits 8,000 400 individuals living in the Chicago land area. Amazing. These are just seven examples of the over 300 nurses listed in this index. These nurses are completely transforming healthcare through innovative thought, research, and practice. Completely transforming healthcare. Listed individually, every nurse innovator in this index is beyond inspiring. But something really powerful happens when you examine the contributions of nurses as a whole. Aggregating the data or the contributions of nurse innovators increases the value of the information because you begin to see patterns. You begin to see trends. You can see existing areas where nurses have leveraged innovation opportunities and created significant impact. And you can also see the innovation deserts the places where nurse innovators are desperately needed. Next steps for this index include obtaining funding to update the website to include improved searching capabilities and metrics to track user engagement, examining research opportunities, so taking a single measure like cough savings and measuring that across the entire index, 
or a specific subset of the index and measuring all the outcomes associated with instance for health, for instance, health equity. The research possibilities with this index are really endless. I want partnerships to grow the index, and I'm also interested in maximizing opportunities for dissemination to build awareness so that this index is really utilized and known as an innovation resource. Finally, I like to think of the index as the edge pieces of a puzzle. It represents the frame or the contributions of nurse innovators. And although there are many innovators or puzzle pieces left to be placed, the picture is there. I can see it. I can see possibilities and potential for this index. And I think the reason why nurse innovators have been so supported and excited about participating in this index is because they can see it too. Before I move to the next slide for any questions and answers, I really just wanna thank Noah Hendler, who's been my advisor for this project. He has helped me every micro step of the way, and I mean micro step for those that know me. Um, I'd really like to thank Linda Benton and Michelle Morgan from J&J, &J, Rebecca Love and Nancy Hanrahan from Nurse Approved, Lynn Fick Cooper from CCL, my Rush and my NIU family, my family, and the 11 other fellows who have been a constant community of support. I will be forever grateful. At this time, I'm shoring it up and I'd be happy to take any questions. Olivia, that was a fantastic presentation. I remember when J&J &J dived in to do research on nurse innovators and they made that gorgeous video and Linda Benton saying, we had to hire an expert in the deep web to find those stories because so much of nursing history had been erased from our impact. So I would just like to say a communal thank you from all of the comments that are coming in right now, that you have done something to capture history of nursing in a way that is going to change the future of our profession and thank you. So the question is, um, what, is the, what is the goal of this index and the plans you have to promote it more broadly, broadly nationwide so that others can benefit from this as well? How are you getting it out there so the world can see this? Wonderful question. So one of the things that I've been able to do is start to create some partnerships. So there's the Nursing Now Challenge that's based out of the UK. I partnered with them to start the international platform dialogue because I feel like, especially as a nurse that I've practiced in Guinea, West Africa, people in other countries, especially countries that have limited resources are probably the best innovators in the world because they have to be for survival. And I feel like if we have a platform that can really share and disseminate innovations that are taking place worldwide, we all can benefit and learn from those innovations because why would we all be working on the same thing in different areas? If we can leverage the expertise and skills from somebody that's already done it, why not do that? And I really want to involve, again, the international partnerships to be able to successfully um, leverage that opportunity. So great question. Actually, it ties perfectly into the next question. If anybody else wants to, please drop your questions in the Q&A. But Olivia, have you considered including a discussion board on your website to possibly foster this kind of communication? That is a great, great opportunity. Um, I think that there's so many opportunities that I've gotten so far as far as the feedback and ways to make the website better and work um, at a better level for people that are interacting with the index. So I, I really appreciate that comment. I think it could really provide a great opportunity to network um, and dialogue with people that are interested in innovation solutions. And the question also, Olivia, came in from one of them, Olga Kagan. Are there any innovations that you've been able to find or are tracking that are linked to patent numbers that are applicable or available? Are, we, are they linked into that? There's um, the go gown. If you go under products, um, Ginny um, had just actually emailed me back and there's a direct link to her patent. Um, but that's an area that I want to include that's not represented right now in the index is an actual place where people can put their patent information. I feel like that's something too that should be encouraging because I feel like um, people need to know that information as well. So another great point that I'm looking to add into the index. And Olivia, another question. Well done, Olivia. Fantastic work. Are you linking up with any professional organizations to know about this? 
Yes, so I'm in the process of building as many partnerships um, to really, again, disseminate this information. I feel like um, partnerships with nursing schools for especially nursing students that may not have the opportunity to be at schools that really infuse innovation education into their programs. Um, I feel like this could be a really great partnership um, in the sense that uh, the academic arena also industry arena for people in the industry to really know what nurses are doing. I feel like there's a myriad of possibilities with partnerships um, and I'm really open to that because I feel like um, that's a great way for nurses to show their expertise. And Livia, any final thoughts that you would recommend to other nurses uh, on how they become or tap into their own uh, nurse innovator? Well, I feel like because we are the closest to the problems, nurses are directly positioned to fill those gaps. So because again, we provide um, the hands-on patient care, we're in an opportunity to see those unique needs. So I guess I would say, um, whenever you recognize a gap to own it, but then to take it to the next level to try and do something with that internal question that you have, this could be done better because I feel like that question is the seed that really um, blooms to drive those purposeful changes, the implement um, and hopefully um, the, the outcomes to improve pa patient care delivery. So I guess channel your internal innovator is what I wanna say. And one last question, I think, Olivia, if any more come in, any plans on having this on the Sancia link to their, on their website? Yes, I have um, been in talks with uh, you and Noah and um, really hope to build these partnerships so that um, this information can be disseminated widely. So the potential. Olivia, you're going to have to look at all the comments. I mean, you have inspired so many of uh, the nurses here sure. and the amazing <laughs> website, the great resource, and just so far how you come in the last two years. And it's just given us such inspiration. So thank you so very much.